Hello there and welcome to uh, my kitchen. Uh, great to have you all today. Um, so today we are being looking at gnocchi. Uh, gnocchi is a type of pasta and why we're we doing this is because it relates to some of the lessons we've been doing in class to do with cereals and food commodities. Um, so we've been looking at uh, uh, cereals, uh, obviously lots of different types of uh, dry grass, but we'll be looking at uh, flour, wheat flour, uh, rice flour, so we're we'll using both of those today, um, uh, different amounts, but if you've only got wheat flour, that's fine. And we're looking at food alternatives and how we can put this together and how we make this pasta, so it's not your uh, normal pasta. Um, why else are we doing this? Skill level. Um, so for GCSE, um, we like to, one of the key skills and one of the high level skills will be making pasta. So this falls into that, that pot as well. So we're going to be showing you how to make a type of pasta. We're going to be looking at food commodities and really let, uh, touch the learning on uh, cereals. Okay, so that's the, the reason behind it. So if you're joining us from uh, Talking Girls Grammar, brilliant, great to have you on board. If you're joining us from around the rest of the world, um, looking at your lessons, that's great as well. So um, leave your um, messages along the bottom there if you're watching us on YouTube, um, that'd be great. And we can uh, go through and get come back to you about those. So before we begin, before we talk, start talking about gnocchi, um, let's uh, make sure we are prepared to cook. Now, when we prepare to cook, uh, we call that something. Uh, and we uh, call that one mise en place, mise en place. Okay, so if you look at this next slide. Uh, mise en place is about getting ready, okay? So it's about uh, getting your area ready, getting you ready, getting uh, all your equipment and ingredients ready, okay? Uh, and we, the easy way to remember that one is we use the, um, the word Hattie, okay? Now, Hattie stands for something. So if you look at this little slide here, Okay, so H um, is for um, tying your hair back. If you need to tie your hair back, I don't need to worry. I've got a, lot of, a great deal of hair. If you've got long hair or wearing a hat, um, and also to wash those hands. Um, a is for wearing an apron, making sure you've properly um, got yourself covered up with your pro uh, proper hygienic way. Um, the, the next one is T. Make sure your tabletop is nice and clean, particularly important uh, the current, in the current situation. Make sure all the areas are nice and clean. Um, Anti-back down, make sure you're properly cleaned and washed. Uh, the next T is all around about uh, carrying a tray. A tray is great to carry all of I, which is ingredients, and E, which is equipment. So we're getting ready. So uh, let's do that one together. Um, let's get started. So I'm just going to take you with me um, to um, the other side of the kitchen, and we're just going to make sure that we have done that. We have got Hattie all together. Okay, so let's... Uh, Come over to my kitchen sink. There we go. Oh, there we go, Mr. Man's kitchen. Uh, so um, we are going to be making sure that we clean and make sure we use the Hattie. So um, first thing is we need to make sure is we've got some nice soap and water, nice soap and hands rather. So we need to make sure we've done that. So rub your hands together. There we go. Rub them together that way. But don't forget to properly clean them. So we need to get inside the nails there, inside the nails there. Don't get your thumbs. Don't get your thumbs. Uh, back of the hands, in between the back of the hands there. And don't get your wrists as well. So properly clean. Then we need some hot soapy water. Um, so we need to make sure we're properly cleaning off our hands there. Again, both sides. Don't go like that. Then inside the nails, then some thumbs, then back of hands. Don't forget those wrists. Wash it all off. And we're looking at, as you were probably aware, in 20 seconds is what we're looking at. So remember Hattie, okay? Um, when you are getting ready to cook, 20 seconds is what we're looking for. Then get yourself a nice uh, bit of kitchen roll or towel to dry those hands off. And then we'll get those ones um, put away into them. Right. Um, we're nearly ready. So uh, we've done our hands. I don't need to worry about my hair, um, but we do need to think about aprons. So let's get the aprons on, or in my case, we're going to get some chef wipes and an apron on to properly clean up there. So we need to make sure we are fully oh, prepared to cook. So um, if you can all grab your aprons. Which... As well. So hopefully now you are ready to cook as well. We have done everything you need to. Now I've already got my tray over there with my ingredients and my equipment on. Um, you're, if you want to know what equipment and ingredients you're going to need, just have a look along the bottom there and you'll see that they're all listed out and ready for you to go. Okay, so let's go over to the work area and uh, let's start to make our gnocchi. Let's talk about gnocchi. Now, um, gnocchi is, uh, as it's, a, no, it's spelled quite funny, um, what is it? 
Well, it's a type of pasta, okay? So it's gonna be made from a cereal and it's gonna be made from a liquid. In this case, we're gonna be using a wheat flour and we're gonna be using um, an egg to make this one. Now, if you think about standard uh, pastas, um, like, a, like a spaghetti, um, like you might get from the supermarket or the they're generally made with a flour and uh, maybe a water that's extruded through something. We're gonna be looking at uh, wheat flour and an egg, and this is a proper fresh pasta. You can still get it from the supermarket if you go to the fridge areas. Um, you might find that, but we're going to make a proper uh, fresh egg pasta. So it's going to be made using an egg and as well as the liquid, and uh, we're going to be using um, flour in there. Now, what makes this different to a standard pasta we might make? Um, spaghetti, uh, tagliatelle, um, lasagna, is we're going to be adding something else into it. And the thing that makes this one into a gnocchi is the potato. Now, you can also make it with a ricotta, um, but generally, Traditionally, as we use potato in this one as well. So um, they're the three uh, three elements to making a gnocchi, and I'm going to show you how you can do that in different variants on that one today. So it's egg, flour, and potato. So um, you'll notice this is our um, cereal. We talked about cereals before, and this is obviously um, we're going to be looking at uh, different sorts of cereals. So I'm also going to, as well as a flour. So I've got some flour here, um, as well as the flour. Um, we've also got some uh, rice flour as well. So we're going to be putting some of that in. Um, for that as well today uh, when we make this one to stop it from sticking. Now, uh, potatoes. So potatoes are the main part of, of this one. They're going to be the big part of this one. We're going to be putting these ones into a bake and it's going to be a cheese and tomato bake that we're going to be putting these into. So we're going to be cooking these ones in a few different ways today. Um, we're going to be using some, we're going to be boiling, um, we're going to be frying and sauteing, um, and we're also going to be using the oven. So it's quite a lot going on there as far as it. So uh, let me show you the recipe. Here's a quick look at the recipe. Right, uh, welcome back. So um, there's, there's quite a lot of steps there. We're going to break it down into the nice 10 steps that we've got for, for making it. But the first one is, is the potato. Now I suggested on the recipe there, um, we can use um, some tin potatoes because I'm thinking about lockdown larders here, what you might have. So if you can't get hold of fresh vegetables, so obviously we're coming out of lockdown now, but you still might have an issue with some of those. So um, you can make it a few different ways. We're going to be looking at um, making it with some uh, tins. We've got some tin potatoes and some tinned new potatoes. So you can make it with the Latin new potatoes, we're going to be using those. Um, so it's a great way to do it. But it's also a lovely way to be using up um, old potatoes. So you could use, um, we've got some uh, we've got some old baking potatoes here. So we're going to we can use a baking potato. Um, and it's a great way of using up, uh, old baking potatoes. So you can use, um, we've got some uh, baby potatoes here. So you could use um, some baby potatoes if you wanted to use those. Um, but a great way of using up um, leftovers here, thinking about reducing waste. Um, loving our food and reducing our waste. So um, if you're thinking of a baking, uh, how traditionally you might be able to make this, when you just obviously grab yourself a, a baking potato um, or um, a nice floury potato works really well with this one. Uh, and don't forget to um, prick it a few times with a fork. We don't want it to be exploding um, in the oven. Um, and then um, put that one into the oven. Now, here's one I prepared earlier. Um, don't forget to be really hot, so again, use your oven gloves to get this one. Um, and now, let's take this one back to, to our area here. So, traditionally, you'd be using that, so I've got a lovely baked potato there. Um, you're going to need to open it up using, say, you're going to use an oven glove here because it's going to be really, really hot. Um, just going to slice that one open um, up there. There we go. There we go. So, we've got that sliced open there. And then, I'm just going to open that one up, and you can see in there that beautiful steaming potato in there that's wonderful and soft. Um, let's just show the camera there. There we go. So we've got a beautiful, beautiful. So if you've got old, old potatoes or um, baked potato, you're going to bake that one up. You get another way of doing this one. So we've got some nice fluffy potato in there. Can you see that one in there? I'll just show you on there. It's a beautiful fluffy potato there. Um, which is great. We can we can use that one. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Don't say don't get too rich, otherwise you get exploding potatoes. Um, the other way, so if you can't if you can't get hold of potatoes, you're still struggling to get hold of fresh vegetables on there um, during lockdown larders, um, is to be uh, using some 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 like I said before, so some um, tin potatoes here, and they come in they come in the can there. So we're just holding up trying to do that one. Some tin new potatoes there. Now when you're doing this one, uh, obviously this is going to have a lot of water in it. 
Um, so you can see on there um, that if you move, I'll show you on the camera again there. There we go. You can just about see on the top there. That is full there of water. Okay. Um, so they've got water on there. Now um, it does say when you're doing this one, do not boil. Okay. It says do do not boil there um, at all. Um, not suitable for microwaves. Not suitable for deep fry. Okay. So these does say um, do not boil. Uh, do not boil. Just to cook gently. We are going to do the opposite here. We we will want to. We're going to boil these ones. Um, the reason we're going to boil them just for a few minutes on there is that we're going to break them right the way down. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you with new potatoes here how to do this one because it's quick and easy. Um, but like I say, if you wanted to do it with the potato there, give yourself an hour um, to to bake your potato there, um, and that's fine. You can give yourself an hour and do it that way. I'm just going to do a slightly quicker one now. Uh, might use a bit of a combination of the two. I'm um, trying to show you some ways of uh, saving here again. You don't want to be uh, wasting uh, electricity or energy, so I'll show you those as well. So with my can of new potatoes, I'm now going to go um, over to my saucepan. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to move over back over to the kitchen here. Um, we're going to go go over to the hob here. Alrighty. So um, I'm over at the hob. Remember, caution, hot surfaces. Okay, um, caution, 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 hot surfaces. So we're over here at the hob, and um, I've got here um, a saucepan. Let's move the frying pan out of the way to so that later. Um, so we've got a saucepan here. Um, in, uh, I'm going to put that one in there. Gonna the saucepan, and I'm going to pour my potatoes, including the water, into there. Okay, and we're going to uh, boil this one up. Do exactly what it says not to do on the tin here. Okay. Um, we're going to boil this one up, save your energy, don't forget to put a lid on there as well. Now your potatoes need to be just covered with water, okay? If they're not, it's not enough water in the tin, um, that's fine. Um, why don't you use a kettle of boiling water and we just top that one over the top. So I'm going to do that one now. Got some, just to cover it up a little bit more. Got my kettle here, just going to pour a little bit extra um, water just to cover those over. There we go. Lid on the top, save our energy, be working faster that way as well. Um, we don't want to heat up all the air around it, we just want to heat up the food that's inside it. I'm just going to switch that one on, there we go. Um, now, um, we're going to be uh, boiling this one up, I'm going to leave it for four to five minutes. Now, don't forget when you do that one, oops, there we go. There we go. Um, when we do that one, it's boiling away, it's boiling away. Uh, if you're going to be leaving a pan, um, like I said above before, if you can see there, caution, hot surfaces, okay? Um, caution, hot surfaces. So um, when you're leaving a pan, make sure your pan handle is not facing out, where I'm likely to knock into it. So please be careful when in the kitchen um, to make sure your pan handle is not pointing out. I'm just going to put it aside, okay, over the top of the work surface, and I'm going to leave that one for five minutes just to boil away, okay? While we just have a look at everything else we're going to do. So I'm just going to leave that one there, but make sure your pan handles, caution hot surfaces, um, make sure your pan handles there are pointing or not pointing out so I can knock into it. All right. Um, right. Let's uh, let's go back and have a look at everything else while we're doing that one. Now, so you can either use the um, tin potatoes there that are now boiling away, um, which is what we get to try and do in the recipe to make that one faster. Or, like I say, you can use um, the uh, baked potato filling there, um, nice floury baked potato there, and we can use that one instead. A good way of using up those ingredients. Right. So the next thing we need to think about is egg, and we need to think about the flour. Um, so in a moment, we are going to, um, we're covering up the potatoes, um, we're going to lift the potatoes out of there, we're going to, um, we're going to pat them all down, and then we're going to, um, we're going to then uh, break them down into tiny, tiny bits. If you've got a potato ricer, fabulous, that's great. If you haven't, don't worry, <laughs> we, can, we can use um, a cheese grater, which is what we're going to use today. Or, or in fact, you could just use your hands and crush them up really, really small. The idea is um, we want to break up these uh, potatoes so they're very, very thin. So ideally, let's say a potato ricer, which is like a massive like a garlic press or a potato masher, um, or just a cheese grater. Okay, so uh, we're going to just use a cheese grater because it's kind of close to hand and, and easy to use. Um, now, 
Uh, we're also going to need, um, uh, with that one, 100 grams of that. We're going to do this one the way you might do it um, in Italy, okay? So we're going to be, um, this is a tiny pasta, we're going to do it on the work surface, okay? So we're going to, we're going to do this one on the work surface. So I'll just, um, just move this one down. Um, so we're going to, the first thing we need is 100 grams of flour. So, so let's get ourselves 100 grams of flour. Uh, we talked about flour plenty of times in lockdown, but just a reminder, easy ways to get hold of flour. If you're still struggling to get it from the supermarkets, um, or can't get the supermarkets to do it, um, try and go with the commercial supplier like we use, which is the same supplier we use in school, Fish Food, they deliver nationally, there's homes still. Um, or if you wanted to go to speak, find a local supplier, that's um, so another local supplier that supplies uh, schools, pubs, restaurants, that sort of thing that will want to be delivering to you. Or go direct to pubs, restaurants, um, cafes that are closed at the moment and see if they might be able to send you some contact them via email or phone them up and see if they can leave it outside for you so you've still got social distancing um, and you can do it that way. There's lots of different ways we can manage to get hold of flour during lockdown. Okay, um, so I'm just going to um, add our flour to there. So we're looking for 100 grams of flour. Um, if this was traditional Italian one, you'd be looking at trying to get a double zero flour, okay, which is a really fine, high protein flour. Okay, so you'd be wanting to look at something like that. Um, double zero is great, a really, really strong flour. Um, lockdown harder situations, we're, we're going to go with any old kind of flour you can get your hands on over there. But, but you know, for the better one, you'd be looking at a double zero or pasta flour. You could even use a strong bread flour. But um, for this one, we're just using a, just a plain, plain white flour, just so you can do this one here, just a plain white flour um, and two tomatoes. So I've got 100 grams of plain white flour here. I'm just going to put that 100 grams of plain white flour um, straight onto my work surface, okay? So I'm just going to literally put that straight onto my work surface. Can you see that there? Um, so you can see I've uh, put that one bigger. Uh, so you can see that one. There we go. Okay. Um, so you can see there in my hands, um, we're just going to got the uh, plain flour straight onto there. Now, um, along with the, the plain flour, um, we're going to need the egg. And so you could use other sorts of liquids, you could use a water-based one, but we're going to be using a proper egg here. So um, I've got some, some eggs here. Um, so again, if you'd be struggling to get hold of eggs, how, think about think about in ways you can get hold of eggs. Um, so I mean, you can get your eggs from, from the, from, it's coming from supermarkets, so um, maybe try getting them from your milkman. We, we, we get our um, eggs from our milkman. Yeah. Uh, so um, grab, it, grab yourself an egg. Um, we're going to be putting the egg into um, the centre of this one um, with our potato as well. So um, what I'm going to do is, with the flour here, I'm going to make a little well in the middle to put our egg and our potato into. So we've got 100 grams of um, there. So I'm just going to show you there. So we've got our flour there. I'm going to make a little well into the middle. Now in this well, we're going to be putting in our potato um, and we're going to be putting in our egg. Um, and we're going to uh, work in them together, mix them together to form a nice dough, and then we're going to divide that up. But we need to get the mashed potato into the centre of this well here with the egg. All right, so uh, so let's get back to my potato. Now I could use um, some of my potato here, so I've got um, my potato here. Um, we're looking at, um, so we'll, I'm going to try and put some of the, the fresh potato in. We don't want to waste this one, so I'm going to put some of this one in. Or we can, and we can also use some of the potato that we've used um, from there. Uh, there we go. So I'm just going to put some of that potato into the middle there. Scrape that one out. So I'm just scraping the insides of my potato out. Um, like I say, otherwise, we can all, um, as well, we're going to use some of the new potatoes in there. So I'll show you um, different ways of doing this one. I'm just going to scrape that one out. Um, just scraping it. And by scraping it out, I don't actually need a, um, this one, but I could... If I wanted to, I can also use a, a cheese grater. So I'm just going to grate some of that cheese in there, some of that in there as well. We're basically we're mashing up this potato, so we can use that one that way. Um, great. We want potato into the middle. All right, so I'm just going to get all that potato into the middle of our flour. There we go. Potatoes in there. Nice floury one there. Okay, it's a nice solid... This is a solid bit of potato there, so I'm going to go back to my cheese grater. I'm just going to grate that one in there. And don't get potatoes that come straight out of the oven, they will be hot. I've let this one cool now. Got another big lump there. I'm just going to use my cheese grater again. I'm just going to grate that potato on. We've got a lovely, finely grated potato on there. 
Um, now let's go, go back to our potatoes um, that have been boiling on the side. They should also be done now. So I'm just going to pop back over here. Now, uh, when we do this one, we want to try and be as efficient as we can with the use of our ingredients and the use of energy. Um, think about the environment here. Um, okay, um, so uh, we're not going to throw away this water. Okay, we're going to use this water um, a little bit later. Okay, so so don't use, uh, don't throw away the water. Um, all right. So let's um, let's uh, let's get on with this one. Now these are now boiling away. So I'm just going to um, get. Some... Uh, let's take the lid off that one. Oh yes, boiling away, lovely. Like I say, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to leave the water, so just switch, the, switch it off. I'm just going to leave um, the boiling water because we're going to come back and use that one again um, in a little bit. All right. Um, so don't, don't try and get rid of all of that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a bowl here and line it with some kitchen roll. Get the dry ways out. So I've got a bowl lined the kitchen roll there. I'm going to use. I can use could use one of these. I could use a, um, if I'm chipping away the water at the end of it. I could use a colander, but I'm going to keep the water. I'm going to reuse that. Um, okay, so I'm just going to get my potatoes out very carefully, put that one into my uh, bowl lined with kitchen roll. Okay, there we go. Fabulous. So. They are now in there, they're just going to be, the kitchen roll is just going to get all the moisture off there. I'm going to leave that pan because I want to use that water again. Put the lid back on that one. I'm going to come back to that one. Remember pan handles, don't want the pan handles sticking out because it can knock into that one. So you can make sure your pan handles stuck to the side, okay? Um, don't want anyone causing any injuries, all right? Um, so let's go back, let's go and take the potatoes back. We're going to mix them now with our one of flour, we're going to put them in there with 100 grams of flour and with our uh, egg. We'll combine all of those ingredients together to make our wonderful gnocchi. Okay, I'm going to show you how to shape them as well. There's a few different ways you can shape a gnocchi. Um, gnocchi are like potato dumplings, if you think of them like that. And we're going to be putting them in with tomato and cheese and baking them off. So that's the first bit we've got done. We've got the boiling done. Boiling or baking, depending on which type of potato you want to use. Um, the recipe obviously uh, asks for um, uh, boiled, boiled up tin potatoes, but we're going to use what you've got. We're going to work with what ingredients you've got at home. All right. Um, so those potatoes, um, they're cooling down quite quickly, actually. Um, um, so we've got our potatoes in there. They're actually cooling down fairly quickly. So um, again, cheese grater at hand. And what I'm going to do with this cheese grater is I'm going to grab one of the potatoes, which actually cooled down quite nicely, and I'm going to grate that potato into the pile here. So that's actually quite nicely um, broken down. Like I say, you could use a um, potato ricer if, you want to, if you've got one of those at home. Fabulous, that would be the perfect job for it. So just, just grating that one down, as you can see there, into my pile of, um, pile of uh, wonderful flour. There, I just have wet flour, our wheat cereal. And there, so I'm just going to show you there. Here we go. Can you see what I'm doing there? Fabulous. So I'm just going to grate that one down into... Nice pile there of potato and flour. Grab another one of those potatoes there in the bowl. And we'll just do that again. Grating that one down into there. Fabulous. Now you can see that I've already put the potato from one of the baked potatoes. So I'm going to save that and make some more gnocchi in a moment with this one. And so we've got one, two, three, four. I think I'll do one more of that one. There we go. Fabulous. Um, so you, we've got the idea there. Which we do? What we do? Um, so you've got there the. Um, you can mash this potato up to the centre. Um, that's fine. You can use a backbone fork to mash it if you haven't got a cheese grater at hand. And we just want to mash that potato up or grate it up, squeezing as much water out beforehand as we can. That's why I've got it into there. And we'll get that one into the middle of our pile. Fabulous. All right, next part of this one is we are going to then, uh, we're going to then add our egg to this one. So we'll crack our egg into the centre to make it well again into the middle of this one. Crack the egg into the middle of that one. Break it inside, and then we're going to um, then we're going to start to uh, mix that one together. Now I'm just going to use the same fork with this one. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack the egg in. Um, I'm just going to fold together the potato and the flour 
to make a dough. Now with gnocchi, we don't want to over mix the gnocchi, okay? We don't want to, we don't want to, um, we don't want to overwork it. We want a light fluffy gnocchi. And if, if we overwork it, um, we're not going to create bread here. So there's no need to, to knead this one for 10 minutes. Um, just combining it. And if you see bits of egg and bits of flour in it, that's fine. Okay, don't worry about that one. But we're just going to combine these, these together. So let's do that one together. Um, let's combine all of those ingredients together. So we've got that there. I'm just going to make a little well into the middle. So to put it, it's like a nest here. So we've got potato, flour, and one egg into the middle of this one. So let's just crack the egg. In it goes, into the centre. Right, just going to now use that fork to now just put it all together. Traditionally, you might just put two egg yolks into this rather than the whole egg. Um, we're trying to trying to think about uh, wasting here, so we're just going to put the whole egg into this one. I'm just going to combine all of those ingredients together um, to do it. Now, if you've got something like a, a scraper, some sort of uh, you can use that to do it. You could use a knife to do this one. I'm just going to use a fork just to combine holding the ingredients together so that they're all combined. You can see the egg in there, you can see the flour in there, um, that's fine, don't, don't worry about that, that's absolutely great. And we're just gonna combine all of those ingredients together so we've got ourselves a beautiful dough going on there. You'll find the moisture from the potato, although we've uh, perhaps those dries will, will um, still um, add to this one. There we go, that's beautiful. And I'm gonna just start to bring this together now with my hands. Um, and like I said before, you want to, um, when you're doing this, these gnocchi, you want to make sure that uh, you are not going to be overworking this one, all right? So please, please don't overwork this one. You just want to bring this one together very lightly. So I'm just going to do this now. So I'm just going to bring it together really lightly into a dough ball on my, don't be, don't be tempted if there's, uh, if, it, if your potatoes add too much moisture, don't be tempted to add more flour to this one. We want to, we don't want to be doing that. We don't want it to be too dry. So I'm just going to bring those together now into uh, very softly and gently bring that one together into folding it together into a ball. So let me let me just get that to show you, show you exactly what I'm doing here. Um, there we go. You can see on the board there. Okay, so I'm just bringing that one together very lightly, just folding all of that, all of that ingredients together. And as I do so, I'm just going to clean my board. With it, and don't forget that was the first thing we did. Was one of the first things with Hattie was just to make sure that our board and our work surface and our tables were cleaned down. There we go. Just bring that together ever so lightly, holding that one together. There we go. That's beautiful. That's lovely. I can see the bits of potato in there. I can see the bits of egg in there. That's fine. That is absolutely fine for our dumplings. Okay. So don't worry about that. So there we go. It's just brought together very nicely. And don't need to be needing this one for 10 minutes. Just clean the board there. Okay, it's getting quite sticky now. There we go. So we'll leave that one there. Um, now, like I said, we want to use, we're going to try and use another type of flour here. And I'm going to be using my um, my rice flour at this point. And the reason why I'm using the rice flour is I just don't want it to stick to the board. And I want it to be manageable. So I'm just going to use my rice flour here. And don't get the rice flour. Cereal again. We talked about cereals before, and um, so we're just going to put some, just going to put some rice flour on my work surface. If you haven't got rice flour, um, just use just use a standard plain flour. If you've got a uh, flour dredger, um, you or you just use sprinkle some flour on your on it here so it doesn't stick. Okay, just going to roll that one out into a ball. Um, I've got a beautiful ball now of dough. Okay, I'll show you that one when we've got this beautiful ball of dough. Brilliant. Um, so there we have our gnocchi. Um, can you see that one there? We Hopefully you can see that. There we go. Um, so you can see that we got a gnocchi ball um, there. So we've got that one ball uh, rolled. I'm gonna, what we're going to do now is deal with it very lightly so we don't overwork it. I'm going to divide it up into different into handfuls and then we're going to roll it into sausages. Okay. So I'm just going to um, use a, a knife here just to divide that one up. Let's just use a butter knife here. I'm just going to divide this one up. Okay, all right. You can see the potato in there. You can see a bit of it. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Love that one. All right, now we're going to divide that one up. I'm going to start to roll these ones into sausages. Okay, so we're going to roll it into long sausages before we start to cut these into lengths. 
So I rolled that one up, I'm just going to roll it into a long sausage. It's going to be quite mucky here, look at this. Doing everything. I'm just going to roll that one out just like that. Now you can flavour these ones. You could, um, before you start rolling them out, if you want to add some um, sage into them, it's quite nicely. You could grate some parmesan into them, which is really lovely as well. Um, so you can um, flavour it with cheese. You can actually make, say, put ricotta in there as well if you wanted to. Um, you could put some sage in there. You could, you could um, add lots of different types of flavour into these ones. Um, I've had people to put garlic powder into them uh, at this stage, just before starting to roll them. And you see how I've just spread that one out so we've got nice even amounts there. Okay, so we've got a nice sausage there. Fabulous. Say so lightly doing it. We're not going to overwork this because we want light and fluffy. We don't want hard and tough. All right, so I think that's fairly even down the line now. Um, so what I'm going to do now, once I've done, once done that, I'm going to cut them into little shapes, okay? So tiny little equal portions, um, probably about two fingers at the most, okay? Um, or if you're thinking about that one, um, uh, probably just, a, just about the wide part of a fork there, okay? So just about the wide part of a fork or um, two fingers there, um, just to make them into our, into my, into our little dumplings, okay? So hopefully you can all see that one there. Um, yep, yeah, there we go, you can see me as well. Um, so we're just gonna divide those ones up, and this is this is it. As far as a pasta, there's none of this whole having to roll it through a pasta machine, um, none of the uh, having to to um, roll it out and cut it. We're just going to make our pasta dumplings, our little gnocchi, and we're just going to evenly cut them, just using a butter knife. Okay, so nothing too sharp at this point. And there we have our gnocchi dumplings. Lovely. Love this one. I'm going to continue with these colours. So, okay. Um, so that is uh, your gnocchi made. Um, now we can do a number of different things with that gnocchi. Um, we could uh, just get that one into some, cook it off into boiling water, into which is why we said we're working through before, and put it with um, some melted butter, with some sage, um, or some garlic, uh, garlic butter. Um, roll them in some garlic butter once they've been boiled off, uh, and that would be fine. They would work really nicely, sage and butter or garlic butter, um, and, and be beautiful. But we're going to make this one with a sauce to go with this one. Um, but before we do that one, um, let's uh, let's get these ones together and shape them. Now, um, there's a few things you can do with the gnocchi. If you can see that gnocchi on there, a few things we can do with it. We could roll it just into a ball. Just roll it into a dumpling ball, just like that, and we have got um, little dumpling balls, which is which is fine, which which will work. Um, but let's look at some more traditional ways of doing these ones. So um, with our uh, pasta like that, um, we can use the fork. So using a fork. We can then use the fork to make a more traditional shape. We can just put the fork into the middle, squeeze it, so you've got lines in your dumpling there, your gnocchi dumpling. Or if you wanted to, um, what we could do is we can put our thumb into the base, squeeze that one on the top, so you've got the line on the top, and then you fold where your thumb mark was on the inside. And that would be a more traditional side. So you've got kind of like a hole on the outside and then you've got the lines on the other side. Okay, um, so we're gonna try and do them like that. So, um, so you've got your, you've got a hole, squeezed hole where your thumb was on the other side and you've got then um, the wonderful marks of your fork on the top. Um, that would be a more traditional way to do it. Now we put all those lines and grooves on the top and we put the, the thumb mark in the bottom so that, that can get the nice rich sauce on this one. It's going to find a place to be able to catch all that lovely sauce on there. Right? So that are your, they are your potato dumplings. Now you can do a few things with those potato dumplings. Once you've made your potato dumplings, and I've said I've got loads of potato here so I'm going to be making lots of them. Um, just put them, I'm just going to put some bit of rice flour onto your tray. Um, uh, okay, well you could just use a um, down of flour or semolina would work perfectly. I'm just going to put those ones onto there. Um, and uh, the shape has helped nicely. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to put them into the um, into the freezer. Okay, um, freeze them off. Uh, then you just scrape them off the um, pan once it's frozen off. 
put them into a freezer bag, freeze them up, and you can use them whenever you want then. Just require a little bit more, a bit longer of boiling time, but you've got yourself some, some beautiful pasta there, fresh egg pasta, ready to go at any point. Don't forget to put egg in this. It's gonna be so much better than the sort of pasta you get from the supermarket, that hard pasta, because you've got all the vitamins in there. In A, in B, lots of different vitamins going on inside it. Eggs jam-packed full of vitamins. So um, pasta, ready to go in the freezer there. If you for what you don't need, then bag it up, use it another time. For today, I'm just gonna leave these on the side while we come back to them. Um, when we come back to them, um, we're going to be just going to make our sauce first, okay? Um, so let's let's look at our sauce. Um, let's just clean down the work surface there. I come back with another board. Let's put that there. There we go. Okay, new board. We're now going to start with um, the sauce on this one. So let's just quickly pop back to the recipe. now we are all the way down at the stage number seven so we've only got three steps to do and those last three steps are going to be the sauce that we're going to make for this one this is going to be our tomato and cheese sauce which we're then going to put in with our gnocchi um cook gnocchi into a um, a tray um something like um one of these sort of trays like a baking tray you can use a smaller one depending on the number you want to make for however many people's in your household or if you want to go for a, something larger like that we're going to be putting them into that and then we're going to be putting them into the oven. We're going to be putting them into um, a preheated oven at one, uh, 1 and 80 on that one. And we're we'll putting in those in there for um, around about uh, 10, 15 minutes. Again, everything's going to be cooked already. It's just to sort of melt it all up to go together. So nice, quick and easy bake on that one. We're going to cook everything in advance. So, okay, so uh, what do we need for the, um, the sauce? Well, we're going to be using a few different things there. We're going to be using um, pepper. Um, okay, nice red pepper there. We're going to be using some, um, an onion, um, so peppers, onions. We're going to use some uh, garlic there. Okay, now, and then we're going to use some uh, chopped tomato. Now, if you haven't got any, uh, can't get hold of chopped tomato, then and just chop up some tomatoes. Get some chopped tomatoes uh, and chop those ones up. Um, and if you can only get hold of puree or passata um, and put a passata in there, you could use that instead of tomato passata, like a uh, puree to cook some puree down tomato. So you, you choose what you can get hold of on there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use chopped tomatoes. So I've got some, um, so got some chopped tomatoes there. And I'm going to put, use my chopped tomatoes um, in with the uh, pepper um, and the onion and the garlic on this one. Um, and I'm also going to use uh, one of my great things from lockdown. I've been doing lots of growing. Um, so I just got this one from the garden. And I'm going to use some, oh, it's quite a small little plant, this one. I'm going to use some of my basil into this as well, which is going to be really sweet. And basil's got that kind of licorice-y, uh, wine gummy taste to it. So it's sweet and it's beautiful, beautiful. One of my favourite, favourite ever to go in with the sauce, okay? So we've got the egg, flour and potato, which has gone into the, there. Um, and we're going to then, um, we're gonna, they're then going to be putting in, making the sauce in there. So the sauce is going to be having um, the onion, garlic, tomato, and then top that one off, I'm going to put some fresh basil on. Um, but you, you can put some um, of your own on there. Uh, dry basil, if you've, got, uh, if you've got any dry basil, you can do that one as well. Um, and we're going to work with that one. All right, um, so so let's start with this one. Uh, firstly, finely chop the onion. Now, we've talked about finely chopping onions before, but I'm just going to um, go through that one again. So for our gnocchi, we, we need to make sure we're doing this one. So I'm just going to quickly show you on the board and cut this one up for you. You're going to be using a sharp knife, uh, two types of knives you might find in the kitchen. It would be a, a chef's knife or a, a paring knife. One's like a smaller version of the other. Um, make sure you're only carrying one knife at a time there when you're cutting, uh, when you're using knives. Um, make sure when you're um, carrying them, you're pointing the, the point to the floor, blade to the back. So you make sure you're very careful with that. We don't want to touch the blade in any way. We don't want the blade to come anywhere near our fingers. Um, when you get to cutting it, we're going to be using a bridge cut and a claw. Okay, so fridge and claw when we cut that one. So two cutting techniques that are safe. We're going to be doing it on a chopping board. And when you're washing up, please make sure you wash brush away from yourself with a brush 
to clean this one. Don't let the, the knife fall into the washing up bowl, um, otherwise it's gonna hurt if you went to go and grab the knife back out. So make sure that you have got um, that one so that you are gonna react in safety. When you um, don't point knives off to the app, people, um, make sure you're holding it correctly. When you're not using the knife, put the knife at the end of the chopping board. When you come to wash up, like I say, don't drop in the bowl, hold onto it, brush away from the blade, and then leave it to dry at the back. Or alternatively, put it in the dishwasher, whatever you're gonna be using to clean that one up, but be using them safely. Okay, so I'm gonna use a chef's knife to show you, but generally speaking, I would be using a more paring knife at home. So we are probably using paring knife, but just so you can see what I'm doing a bit, a bit easier, I'm gonna use the chef's knife for you today. Um, we've done onions before, but just a quick little recap on the onions. Um, we're going to be using a bridge and a claw. Now we start with a bridge, then we go into a claw. So if we've got your onion there, let's draw your onion there. There is your onion uh, with the smelly feet along the bottom. Okay, um, so the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing our first cut, which is going to be um, cutting straight down the middle. number one um, and that number one cut is going to be a bridge number two it's going to be a claw the opposite direction number two is going to be a claw okay then I'll show you the next two so let's do that one first together so I've got my uh, onion First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it around its tummy, okay, so not by the top or the bottom, I'm going to hold it around by its tummy, and then I'm going to be putting my knife through the middle, you can see what I'm doing there, it's just going down the middle of the onion, knife's not touching my hands, it's just going to go straight down the middle of the onion there, can you all see that one there? Perfect. Um, so cut down the middle of the onion, um, and then I've got my two halves flat down on the board, okay, and um, so two halves flat down on the board, then and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the claw the other way. So thumb right back, fingers over the top, okay? Thumb right back, fingers over the top to form a claw. I'm going to put that claw on top of the onion, okay? And I'm going to slice off the top piece, okay? So let me just show you on the board there so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so um, I've got, there we go. Um, I've got my two onions there, two onion halves. I'm going to put my claw on the top and I'm just going to slice the tops off, not the bottoms, but the tops off. Okay, put my knife down. I'm going to peel back the skin of the onion. Okay, so skin peel back, skin peel back. Okay, um, then I'm going to go back to cutting again. So I uh, will start with the bridge and then we go to the claw. Let me explain that one on the board. So um, we've got over there, um, we've done the first cut, which is a bridge. Then we do the second cut, which is a claw. The next cut we're going to do is we're going to be, let me show you the onion how it looks now. So we've got the top taken off. We've got our onion there. Oh, a bit of a squiffy looking onion. Uh, we've got all of the skin peeled back. There's the feet underneath. Okay, um, what we're going to do now is we're now going to, if you look very carefully at the onion, you'll see there's a very fine ridges of the onion which form lines like that and um, let me show you on the camera there you might just be able to see those ones uh, if i show you get the light there we go you might just be able to see that there's lines running down each of these if you can't see them you'll be able to feel them running down okay um so what we're going to do there is we're going to cut down those so using um the knife again uh, with a bridge flat on your board you're going to be cutting down as many of those as you can now you don't need to cut all the way to the base. So what I'm going to do for um, cut number three is I'm going to cut down, but I'm only going to go about two thirds of the way down. So I'm going to cut two thirds of the way down my onion. Okay, so that's my number three, and that's going to be a um, bridge again. So number three here is going to be a bridge. Three is a bridge. Okay, so we're going to be cutting down the onion, going down there, cutting it into a bridge. So I'll just show you that one on the camera. If I move the camera down a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing there. All right, so you can see the onion halves there. And I'm just going to cut down about two thirds of the way down, as many as you can, 
I'm not going anywhere near my fingers, so you keep your fingers well away from the from the blaze. I'm just going to cut down about two thirds of the way down, as safe as you can. If you're feeling a bit worried about that and you don't think you can cut it down, you can always use a fork and you can go through a fork like that to cut them down. Okay. Once you cut that way, we're then going to go the opposite direction with a claw, and we're going to cut the opposite way. Let me just show you that one on the board again. So we've got um, number one. Two, three, so four will be going the opposite way. So we're like a noughts and crosses game. So we're now going to cut this way. Okay, so I'm now going to cut across this way all the way to about two thirds of the way down again. So that's number four, and that's my claw. Okay, um, so let's do that one together. Let's cut that one together. I'm going to just show you down now. Here we go. Back down to the board here. And I'm now going to, with a claw, thumb right back, fingers at the top, I'm going to slice down these. Okay? So, we've got onion sliced up nicely. Okay? Clear all those space. Clear that one off. And we'll do the same with the other one. Um, and so we've got some nicely bits of onion. All right? Uh, so that's how to cut our onion for our gnocchi, um, and we're going to be mixing that one together in a moment. So we've done we've done the onion there. Oops, got a little hat going on there. And we're going to do the onion there um, to make our sauce. All right. Um, so let's uh, let's do, mix this one up. I'm going to get the rest of the um, chopped onion chopped up for you. So onion is now chopped up nicely and small on the side there. Um, brilliant. Um, that nice and small, we've talked about before, it's tiny little boxes, uh, like cuboids, six-sided cuboids. So six-sided cuboids are what we call dice. Okay, so we have now diced up our um, onion so it is nice and teeny tiny small. Now, in with the diced up onion, we're going to be putting up a chopped up pepper. So let's just clean down the work surface there as we're going along. Put a cloth on there. Clean that down. So we've just got there. Um, pepper. So I'm um, using a, a red pepper here, and then I'm going to do some garlic cloves to go with that one as well. So let's um, let's show you how we're going to cut, cut up our pepper. Um, the pepper um, we're very simply we're going to do because it's it's not long and thin. Again, we're going to be using starting with a bridge and then going into a claw with that one. Okay. So uh, bridge first, then claw. So what we're going to do, a bit similar to the um, similar to the onion in that aspect, so we've got the bridge, which is going to be down the middle, and then we're going to be doing um, claw. So we're going to do bridge first of all down the middle. So thumbs and finger either side, and then we're going to put the knife through the middle so it doesn't come anywhere near close to our fingers, and cut straight down the middle. Okay. So I'm just going to cut that one straight down the middle. So I've got the two sides there of my pepper. Um, now what I'm going to do with this one, I'm just going to use my thumb, put my knife down safely on the board, I'm going to use my thumb just to tear out the middle of my pepper now. So I'm just going to tear, tear it all out, so this is what I'm just doing there, tear out all the pithy parts and the seeds, I don't want it to be too bitter, so let's just grab all of that, tear out all the sections there. Okay. Um, so I've got one, I'm going to do one pepper into this one, so same with the other side, tear the stalk, rip out the centres, Okay, so I've got just ripping all of that out. Beautiful. Get all the seeds out, cleaned out now. So I've got my two peppers there. Now, still not long and thin, so I'm going to pick my knife up again and we're going to keep on going long and thin. So I'm going to keep bridging until we've got long, thin parts. So what I'm going to do with my um, knife, if you can have a look there, I'm going to go through my, between my thumb and forefinger and I'm going to cut through that pepper all the way down. So we go all the way down to form long strips here. So let's uh, clean the spoil again. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that one next to my onions. Let's uh, I'll clean down and show you what we're going to do. So if I show you on the board there, we've got our two peppers. I'm going to um, get my thumb and finger there. Thumb and finger there, down the middle. And I'm just going to keep going, going all the way down. I'm going to cut through the flesh side because it's going to be easier than trying to cut through the shiny side. So you notice that I put the pepper, um, so it's 
So the fresh side is up and the skin, the sweaty skin, is pointed down. Now each time I'm doing this one, I'm just going to be going between my thumb and finger. I'm not mixing my thumb and finger, it's just between it. Four, nice. Now you can get this as thinly as you want. But you see I've got those nice long strips now. Now I've got nice long thin strips. So we can do this one more time there. Now we can go the other way with our claw. Remember, thumb right back, finger over the top, and we're going to chop down these ones into tiny small bits. So I can now chop those ones up into squares uh, or as the cuboids, which are actually more like dice. So we've got pepper, I'm going to do the same with all of these ones. So let's do this one. Okay, and back to me. Uh, right, okay, so we have now done um, the uh, potato, onion, eggplant, onion, we've done the onion, oh, we haven't done the garlic, so let's do the garlic for you. Um, so next one to do, we've got a garlic bowl, same family as the onion. We need to break that garlic bowl open, and inside you will find your garlic clove. We have garlic clove in there. Now, uh, we're going to top and tail the garlic clove and then we're going to uh, crush it, and then we're going to do a bridge and claw to make that one cut up really nicely, finely as well. So um, you could use that, or if you wanted to, if you wanted to use a um, garlic crusher, that would work just as well. So I'm now going to just get this piece of garlic clove, um, and I'm going to just chop that one up as well, really finely. So um, let me just show you back on the board here what I'm going to do with this one. So we've got the garlic there. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to top it, then we're going to tail it, Peel those two bits off, and with it, the skin should just come straight off the outside as well. So I'm just taking the skin off the outside there. Can you see that one there? So that's the garlic there. Now, um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to crush it a little bit. Just to, so I'm going to use the back of a fork. Just going to crush that one a little bit. There we go. Just to start to release some of those wonderful, and also it's going to make it slide less on the board, but release some of those wonderful oils that come from there. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to then um, chop this one up teeny tiny small. So um, well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little teeny tiny little bridge all the way down, a bit like that. And with the others, going to tiny 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 little bridge. Then we're going to do a teeny tiny little claw. Okay, so we've now got onion, peppers, garlic in there, all ready to go into our mix, along with the basil. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those uh, onion, pepper, um, garlic over to the pan. We're going to stir in um, the tomato there and then simmer it for 10 minutes, okay? Um, so, um, so let's just go, we're going to go together now back over to the hob, um, where we're going to be putting these into a pan. We're going to simmer these off for about 5-10 minutes. Um, in with the tomato as well. So I've got the tomato, the can of tomatoes there, and we'll take the can of tomatoes there as well um, with us over to the side. So come with me back to the hob and uh, we'll get this one done. Let's go back over to the hob here and we're going to take all the ingredients back on our tray and um, over to the hob. All right, remember at the hob, caution hot surfaces. Um, right, now you'll see that we've got the pan here still. I'm going to leave that pan just to the corner there. We're going to come back to that when we cook up our gnocchi in a moment. Um, so what we're going to need now is a frying pan. So we've got a frying pan there. Um, if you're using a non-stick frying pan like this, you're going to be used to using something like a, a wooden spoon there, or um, you can use a wooden um, spatula just there to, to do it. Don't be using metal in a non-stick, otherwise you're going to get all the bits that come off. Putting those into the frying pan now. Um, frying pan on the heat here. Um, uh, you don't need um, a great deal of um, oil in this one, so I would, I probably, if you do want to put any oil in, just want to go with something like one of these ones, which is just a, a little spray one. But um, you shouldn't need a great deal in that one. If you're going to put a little bit in there, just spray it in there. Don't put room for loads of fat in this one. Um, okay, and then we're just going to switch the heat on. On to medium heat there. Um, and then we're going to add our ingredients into here. So we've got here the tomato, we we'll just put that one down, we'll do the others first. So we've got the uh, peppers, the onion and the garlic there. You can just see that, I'm going to put those ones in. So let's put um, the peppers in. And then we've got the garlic in there as well. Let's get all that garlic in there. And let's get the onion in as well. 
So we've got the peppers, the onion, the garlic in there. Wonderful. Uh, we're going to let those ones um, just stir those ones around. I'm going to hold those there. So you can see them in their pan there. Just going to stir those ones around. Okay, we're just going to soften those ones off. Um, okay, so we're just going to let those soften off for a little bit in the middle. Um, uh, in with that, we're going to be putting in with that the um, tomato as well. So we've got our tomatoes there. We're going to put our tomatoes in there as well. While they're softening off, we can start to cook the gnocchi. Now you can remember over here, let's move the pan handles around. Um, you can remember here we've got the boiling water from the potatoes in there, so they're still in there. Um, we haven't we've got a top on there, so we kept a lot of the heat in there. We want to reuse the water. We're going to put the gnocchi back in, in there now. So I'll go and bring the gnocchi over and we'll put those into there while we're doing that. Remember pan handles outside there so we don't use get um, past ourselves in there. Got my gnocchi dumplings from earlier. There's my gnocchi dumplings. They're going to go into the water. So bring the boil, bring the water to a boil. And we'll bring that water up there. Back onto the boil up there. Water on the boil there. And we're going to um, we've got the garlic, onion, and pepper sauteing, because we want to just soften them off here, so we're not frying them for too long, we're just going to be lightly frying them, what we call sauteing them, softening them off, so they're in there softening off, the onion, the garlic, um, and the pepper, lovely in there, we've got the pan boiling back up there, just heating that one up into there, and then we've got our gnocchi, which we're going to put in, now, I think we're going to make these into little round balls for today, because um, my kids like them in little round dumpling balls. They'll get shaped, you can shape them in a number of different ways there. We talked about um, in there, but I'm going to just put them in those little dumplings there. Now my balls are going to go straight into that. Into the gnocchi balls, dumplings are going to go straight into the saucepan of boiling water. Um, we'll load those, those in. Um, but if it's going to be boiling water, so don't be putting your hands in there. Um, you need to be um, making sure that you're set careful, portion hot surfaces here. So I'm gonna just check my lid. Might put a little bit more, top it up with a little bit more water. So when you've got a little bit more water from the top of there, we'll put a little bit more water in just to top it, top that one up. Um, you can season it as well. So we're gonna put some salt and pepper into there as well. So let's get another salt and pepper into that one as well. Take that lid off. A little bit of salt and pepper. Into the boiling water. A bit more boiling water in from the kettle. So keep stirring those peppers and onions. They are nicely. If they start to brown too much, turn your heat down. We just really want them to sauté. That browning of the onion is what we call caramelisation. We'll talk a bit more about that when we get to GCSE, about how the sugars change from one to another and we get the, uh, the browning going on there. If they start to, so we just want to soften them today. So uh, just turn your heat down. Um, you're in control of the heat at all times. Remember, the heat is not control of you. Um, and then we're just going to pour in the tomatoes into there. So that goes all of our tomato in with the pepper and the onion. If you see that on the camera there. So we've got the pepper, the onion, the garlic, oh, smelling lovely. And that's now got the tomato in there as well. Beautiful. Recycle that one. Um, the boiling water, let's have a check this boiling water now. Yeah, that's boiling away. Okay, so um, at this point, we're just going to add the um, dumplings into it. So you've got your dumplings there. Here your dumplings go. A spoon. Dumplings into the boiling water. Just lowering each of those in. Now, how do I know when the dumplings are done? Well, the easy way to know when your dumplings are done is they're going to float to the surface. Okay, now how long will that take? Depends on the size of the dumplings that you made. But you should be able to just watch them. There we go. 
Okay. I say if you're using frozen ones, stroke them three, three, it's going to take a little bit longer. Okay, they're in there. Just got a lid back on. All right, dumplings going, sauce is stewing. Um, now the next thing we need to just work on is um, seasoning for the sauce. So um, in with my sauce, and again, I like to put a um, bit of uh, pepper in with that one. Um, but we'll also put in the pepper in there. Um, you can put some paprika in there, which is quite nice. But don't forget, what we're going to be putting in is we're going to be putting in some basil, some fresh basil. So let's just go and get that fresh basil. Tear up some leaves to go into there as well, um, to go into our sauce. Um, also at this point, you can go and preheat your oven. So if you haven't done so already, get your oven preheated to 180 degrees in readiness for all of this to come together. We're going to be putting the gnocchi with the sauce into our oven baked dish, cheese on the top, then into the oven. Uh, that's all going very nicely. I can see that's bubbling up nicely. I can see this is bubbling away nicely. Haven't quite come to the top yet. When this starts to all float to the top, you're ready to go. So I've got my baking dishes ready to go here. Um, choosing different size dishes depending on um, the size of the meal you want to cook here. And we'll put those ones around. Um, let's clean the surfaces down. Right, so we're going to do a couple of things now. So we've got the reduction sauce going on, which is this is concentrating and reducing down. That's our tomato, onion, garlic and pepper in there. And that's reducing down. Concentrating down like a juice would concentrate, like a squash, we can get a concentrated version. We've got the gnocchi, which is now pretty much done. It's all just starting to float up. We've got a couple more just to wait to pop up to the top, uh, and we're ready to put this together. The next thing we need to do is we need to get some cheese. So we're going to grate some cheese um, to go on there. Now, you can, I'm just using a, um, a mild cheddar cheese here. Um, really nicely with mozzarella. If you can get hold of mozzarella, that's a lovely one to use as well. So we're going to grate down some of that to go onto the top, and that's going to go onto the top of our um, our baking dishes. So we've got two different sized baking dishes, depending on which size you want to make for your family, um, or whoever's at home. Um, and then the final, final thing we've got here is we've got some basil. We've got the wonderful basil plant. I'm going to take off some leaves of this basil plant. I'm going to put those into my sauce. I'm going to just tear those up into it. Red, white and green. Nice Italian dish here. We're going to just put those ones in. It's going to flavour it. Tear those leaves up. That one in there. Again, a bit more basil. Just tearing up. If you've got, haven't got fresh basil, you can always put some dried basil leaves into this one as well. That would work. In there now. Right. Um, so we've done, the, we've done the basil. Um, we've got, you can just have a look at there, we've got red, green and red reduction sauce going on there, and the gnocchi is done as well. So let's start to put all of this together for you. Let's uh, turn all these down, and let's do this. Now, uh, like I said before, boiling water, so you won't want to be getting your fingers in to get the gnocchi out. So um, let's use um, something else that you can do use to get that one out. Okay, there we go. So we're going to get the gnocchi out. Um, the gnocchi is going to be going um, into the sauce, and then we'll take everything out of there and bake it up. So I'm going to take my gnocchi out, I'm going to put the gnocchi into the sauce. Let's turn that one down so you can see. There we go. So I've got the gnocchi going into the sauce. So I'm actually putting the gnocchi into my sauce now. Lovely big potato dumplings. Okay, so they're in there now. Stir those ones through. Beautiful. Really lovely. Smell. So good, so good, so good. I'm going to turn them down now. It's a beautiful smell coming off these ones. Um, okay, let's get these ones into the dish now. Right, so I'm now going to get the dish and we're going to put all of that into the dish and then we're going to get that one into the oven. So let's, uh, let's do that now. We're going to get all of that wonderful mixture and pour that one into the dish. So this is nearly ready to get into the oven. Can you see that there? 
Um, so what I'm going to do now is going to put some cheese on top of this one. So let's grate some cheese on top. And you can either say great, so I'm going to put some cheddar on this one, but if you've got some mozzarella, you can tear up some mozzarella and go onto there, that would be beautiful. Okay, and you can see that one on the camera now. There's your beautiful bake. And now we're going to get that beautiful bake into the oven. So don't forget to take your oven gloves off if you're getting stuff into and out of the uh, oven. Take your oven gloves on. And we get this one into the oven. Uh, into the oven at 180 degrees. And we'll uh, do that now. Okay, so that's now in the oven. Um, so the next thing to do is make sure you properly wash and clean everything up, as the slide says. Make sure you've washed and cleaned everything up in your area and we're in a nice clean kitchen ready to go. Um, thank you very much for joining me today. I uh, hope you had a great time with that one. Love to see the pictures or any comments about your bakes. Um, so thank you very much indeed. Goodbye.